Hello there, friends. Did you miss me? I hope you did. I missed you, like, really so much. I didn't realize how much I enjoyed making this, these videos until I kind of lost the option to do them temporarily. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be back, finally. Um, it feels great. I'm really happy. My previous upload was sort of a first attempt at vlogging. It was probably terrible. Um, and I said at the end that I had some really big troubles moving. Uh, and I will go into detail about it later. Well, here I am. I'm right here to tell you about all the <laughs> terrible things that happened uh, while I was moving. All while working on this, I guess, first painting in Ottawa in the background. So, lean back and get infuriated with me. I'll go over all these things in order, going from the least infuriating to the most. And first one being <laughs> where we lived. So I moved with my mom, uh, she helped me with all that stuff and then she went back to Winnipeg. Um, but we had to stay in a friend's house and honestly I am so grateful and so happy that we even got this option instead of having to look for an Airbnb. But the downside of that is that uh, these friends, they don't even live in Ottawa, they live in one of the towns close to Ottawa. Um, and we didn't have a car, so me and my mom had to take a bus um, or take an Uber. And like, just for reference, I live in downtown Ottawa, so it's like an hour away or even more on a bus, or like 20 or more minutes on an Uber, um, and it was just like really inconvenient, I guess. It was really um, annoying that we have to commute for so long. Uh, just every day and we also we walked so much like I walked so much this past month Like I swear I probably lost weight and like you probably thinking to yourself Anna you got your apartment September 1st Why didn't you just live there after? Uh, well, we were cat sitting for these friends. Um, and also I have only one bed and <laughs> we, we genuinely had to go back to the friend's house every night to take care of the cats, take care of some house needs that were left for us, um, and also, you know, to sleep normally. And I, I repeat myself, I am super grateful that we have this option. I am super thankful that these family friends let us stay in their house. Uh, but I just, I wish we had a car. <laughs> the next infuriating thing has to do with furniture and buying new stuff. Um, the plan was, originally, uh, for me or one of my parents, whoever helps me with the move, to rent a truck and just take all my stuff, drive from Winnipeg to Ottawa. And that would be a bit more complicated because it takes about two days of driving non-stop to get there. So realistically, I guess three days with breaks or four. Anyway, it would take a long time. Um, so we kind of thought, well more like me and my parents who are so much smarter than me, uh, we kind of decided that it will be easier and uh, maybe not cheaper but just easier for everybody if I went there only with uh, suitcases on a plane um, with all my like necessary irreplaceable stuff and then get everything new once I'm there. So that's what we did. Uh, me and my mom just flew from Winnipeg to Ottawa with a bunch of suitcases um, and then we had to buy new stuff that includes furniture we are loyal customers of Ikea but my god Ikea Ottawa it was such a nightmare we came there um, and all the cheap furniture I was counting on was just gone <laughs> completely uh, me and my mom kind of thought that probably a lot of people are in the same situation as I am. All at the same time, just a bunch of students coming to Ikea and buying all the cheapest furniture possible uh, because, well, they can't afford it, don't see a reason to buy anything more expensive. So once we got to Ikea, probably like September 1st, uh, it was just, comp it was sacked. There was nothing. So we had to buy more expensive stuff. And luckily for me, my family is well off um, financially. Like we're not super rich, but we are pretty good. Um, 
so we could afford to buy all these more expensive furniture. Uh, but it was really infuriating that we even had to. And, and I guess it is sort of our fault because we didn't come early enough, but like... What, what, what do you what do you expect us to do? Come like mid-August? It was really impossible in our situation. So we had to settle for what was available. And I mean, I guess I sound really privileged. Like, boohoo, I had to buy expensive stuff. Uh, but, like, kind of try to look at it from my perspective. I am really doing my best to not inconvenience my family. Uh, even though they are, like, completely willing to pay for me and help me out uh, I really I still like I don't like um, asking them for too much and when I'm in this situation where I have to ask for more more money <laughs> I just I feel a lot of guilt honestly um, so that that pretty much how I felt in Ikea and just gen generally, every time I'm buying stuff for the new apartment, I'm just asking my mom, like, hey, can I buy this? Uh, I'll get, I'll, I'll find a cheaper version if I can. not And she's like, Anna, come on. We have money. <laughs> like, it was, I, I guess I have a, some sort of complex around that. On top of having all the cheap versions gone, um, also the more expensive ones, even if on the display floor it says that, oh, they have it in stock. Uh, once you go to the warehouse where you're supposed to pick it up, it's not there. And I mean, I get it, the workers just didn't have time to update, you know, the display floor. Like, it, it seems they were severely understaffed because the store was a mess. Um, me and my mom were looking for this like, one piece of furniture, I think it was a shelf or something. We go to the warehouse when it, on the display floor it is marked where exactly in the warehouse it's supposed to be. We go to the warehouse, we found the place, like the exact spot where that shelf is supposed to be and something else is there. And then I just like start looking all over the area trying to find it. I find the actual like spot of the of that shelf and it's gone. <laughs> so <laughs> it was awful. A lot of the things I needed um, were just not there. And like no no version of it was available. Like one thing I still don't have and I really need to buy is a mirror. Um, I have only one mirror in the bathroom and it's just really uncomfortable. Like, again, I'm complaining about it and I feel like such a privileged prick. Like, oh my god, I am... I have minor inconveniences, but when you have so many of these, it like really makes your life a bit... I wouldn't say harder, but just more annoying, if you know what I mean. I still don't have that mirror, because they were just all gone. The only mirrors available there were ones you have to hang on the wall, and because I'm renting an apartment, I can't hang anything on the wall. Uh, so, it was just... It wasn't fun, it really wasn't. And now also it will be so much harder for me to get any new furniture because I don't have a car. <laughs> and now I'm gonna get to the worst part. Like this one event, this one thing that made this entire move a nightmare. Just made it zero out of 10, not fun. I do not recommend. And that is my lost stuff. One of my suitcases was lost. <laughs> Um, from what I gather, it probably kind of lost its tag while well, it was still in Winnipeg um, and then they couldn't find it, they couldn't send it because it doesn't have a tag. Uh, basically, somebody, something made a mistake and I had to suffer because of it. Not only me, my entire family, because like the emotional turmoil that we had to go through was terrible. Um, just a reminder, these are all my necessary, irreplaceable things I took with me. I had three suitcases um, and one of them was lost. So in a way, I lost a third of all my things. And coincidentally, these were also like, important things that I needed right away. Uh, this was the suitcase in which I put all the last minute stuff um like 
some medication, some art supplies I was still using while packing, um, a lot of moisturizers. Um, it's just stuff that I needed. Oh, and the worst part, my laptop charger and other chargers. Like, thank God my phone charger was with me, but my laptop, I couldn't use it for a long time. Um, but sorry, I kind of... I kind of... <laughs> jumped forward a little bit let me rewind so we arrive in ottawa uh we find two of my suitcases then we just kind of stand in line waiting you know at that conveyor belt where the suitcases are and the airport worker starts asking us like where are you what, what's your flight we're like that one that just came from winnipeg and the airport slowly started to get more and more empty as more people get their stuff and leave and me and my mom just start like feeling a lot of anxiety because we can't leave yet our suitcase is gone uh, so <laughs> the airport worker said okay let's file a claim we do it um, and he tells us okay you can go tell us the address to which we can send your suitcase you should get it today in the evening or tomorrow all right we leave we think oh well that happens um <laughs> Oh god, I wish it was that easy. Oh. Two, day pass. <laughs> Two days pass, and I decide, okay, I should probably I should probably call them. Uh, the company we were flying with was WestJet, so I call WestJet, and I asked them, like, can you update me on that suitcase? And then suddenly I realized that we gave them the wrong suitcase number. So that was totally my fault. I guess in the panic I didn't look uh, well enough at the numbers. Uh, so that was totally my fault. I updated them, gave them the right number. Another two days pass. Nothing, no word, nothing about the suitcase. I called them again, and this time I get this like really friendly, helpful lady who started asking me questions about like, more about what it looks like, uh, the flight, the which name it was on, because apparently, oh. Uh, the fact that I'm doing the claim, but the suitcase is under my mom's name, it's uh, completely messes up with their system. Uh, even though supposedly they're, uh, they should go by the number, which I gave them at that point, the correct number. Anyways, just their system works in a weird way and that kind of screwed over the process. Okay. Uh, after that, about two weeks pass. Or maybe 10 days. Basically too long, that's my point. Way too long. And I call WestJet like almost every day or every couple of days asking for updates. And <laughs> honestly, I felt like such an entitled prick doing this, just calling them every time. Uh, but if being an entitled prick will get me my stuff back, then bleach my hair and call me Karen because I will get the manager. I was on the verge of tears in one of the conversations because I, I got this worker who was just completely apathetic. They were like, oh, no updates. There's nothing we can do about it. You have to wait. Like, dude, I was waiting for more than a week. That's ridiculous. And some of the workers I talked with, they were just as confused as I am. So I am completely convinced that it was never WestJet's fault. It's somebody at the airport messed up. <laughs> But that, oh, God, sorry, I, I just got really angry for a second. Um, from the stuff I lost, just so you kind of understand why I'm so angry about it, from the stuff that was gone, um, is my really expensive winter coat, um, my graphics tablet that is expensive as well. It was a gift from my family. Uh, other gifts from friends that I can't just replace. Um, my birth control. Art supplies. Uh, my box of Kuretake watercolors. Three sketchbooks. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, uh, my contact lenses that are also quite pricey. And my medical moisturizer. And I'll explain right now why this thing is important. I have a skin condition, uh, which basically makes my skin hypersensitive to absolutely everything. 
from climate to whatever I'm eating to the level of stress. Like, I, I swear, a black cat can cross the street and I'll get a rash somewhere. Uh, just really hypersensitive and nothing helps it. No matter how fancy or expensive the moisturizer I'm using is, uh, if it's not medical. So I needed my medical cream with me. And it just, the situation was terrible for my skin. We first of all went from dry climate to more uh, humid one. So that was a transition that my skin struggled to deal with. And I'm under a tremendous amount of stress. So I, I look like crap all the time. And I felt like crap. Because this condition, it's not only in appearance, it hurts. It itches and really hurts. And I did not have the only thing that helps me with me. I also lost a lot of comfortable clothes that I didn't want to pack right away, like my leggings with pockets in them. Could you believe that? Pockets on female clothes? Oh my god. Um, and a bunch of t-shirts that I got in concerts, so they hold a lot of sentimental, sentimental value, uh, irreplaceable value. Uh, yeah. After like two weeks from the day we landed, I just started to kind of give up. Um, I started to buy new stuff and I just kind of thought to myself that maybe that's the universe telling me that I should grow the hell up. Uh, but on the other hand, um, like why, what did my contact lenses do? What did I have to lose them? So yeah, I started to give up slowly, uh, just kind of move on with life. And then suddenly they found it. So I guess all ends well. Because I had to buy a lot of new stuff, now I have doubles. Like, I have two laptop chargers and so much moisturizer. I won't have to buy any new for, like, a year at least, I hope. Um, <laughs> and we did get some um, money back for these necessities we had to buy. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much the result of that little misadventure. Uh, I have doubles of a lot of stuff and a little bit of emotional trauma. I think how messy this move was just made me feel hopeless. It really, I felt a lot of despair. I thought that that's it. That's how I begin my new life and it's gonna just stay this way. Really messy and chaotic with nothing going smoothly. I'm gonna be alone with no social life and everything is gonna be hard. I was really hopeless at the moment. Um, but after that, I just kind of had this streak of good luck. Um, I've been joining clubs in university. I, in general, I was like unusually social lately. So that feels good. I met some super cool people. So that entire um, aspect of hopelessness about my social life, um, I, it just dissolved a little bit. Like I start, I start to see the light. Um, and also, you know, my suitcase was found and I did settle pretty comfortably in my apartment. So I saw the light and that aspect as well. I started studying, so I had this distraction just from how messy life has been. Um, it's just things just got much better, basically. In retrospect, uh, all of these, everything I ranted about, realistically are just a bunch of somewhat minor inconveniences. But pile all to piled all together, it they made life miserable. It could have been worse, really. It could have been, but it also could have been better. I guess that's, I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. It could have been better. And I am upset that it wasn't. I got my new PC, which allows me to um, edit all these videos. And I got a job. And at the time of recording this, um, my classes just kind of picked up. And I have a lot of assignments that I should probably do instead of recording this rant. Um, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that things kind of fell into place. And despite how bumpy the road was, um, it became smooth in the end, so it's all good. I am very positive. I really want to do my absolute best to keep uploading. Um, this summer I try to upload once a week and I was doing very well, I think. Uh, but right now, because I have so much more stuff to, to care about, 
Uh, I'm really not sure how my YouTube channel is gonna continue. Uh, I just, it's not even about time. What I lack is time management skills and discipline to get, to just get it done. I do have a terrible habit of procrastinating and the more stuff I have to do, the more likely I am to not do them. So that is definitely something I'll have to work on. Uh, I really, really hope and I'll do my absolute best to keep uh, this channel alive. Um, but I make I make no promises because as my move here taught me, life is just a long series of uncertainties and inconveniences. So we'll have to see. Like my dad likes to say, which means we'll live and see. Thank you so much for hearing me out. I really feel supported and a huge weight was lifted off my chest after just telling this story. If you wish to support my channel, you should check out my Instagram and follow me over there. I am usually much more active on Instagram. Also check out my Patreon and my Etsy shop. Links to all of that are in the description below. In case you're curious, the title of this painting I'm working on is Bon Voyage. It is a reference to a song by One OK Rock, which is a Japanese rock band. I like them so much. Uh, and it is about moving on in life, leaving something behind and going towards a better place. More details on that are on my Instagram, which you should follow. See you next time. Bye-bye.